I have still been talking to drive down to Oh, wait, I have a question. Do you have like an inner like dialogue? Can you hear yourself like talk in your head and that's how you think? Yeah, I'm like, you don't see images, but you can't like rotate a really screen in your head. Oh, I do that too. Okay. Because Kobe just sent me a link and he said that he doesn't hear himself talk. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. For what? For keys? For what? Let you into a room. Yeah. That was good. I have yeah. access to everything on this floor. <laughs> There's stuff on other floors. Yeah, I'm not allowed into it. Don't trust you. I mean, would you? So what's missing? A name, maybe. Maybe a title. I don't know. Good question. There's no one right. I'm gonna write it. Yeah, there's no one. You need a pen? Hold on. There's a marker. Okay. This is a lot of pages. That's okay. But it's like half of it is like pictures. That's okay. Which is nice. And it's not like a super high level one, but I just didn't know. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where we start, right? Computational fluid dynamics. So cool. I Okay. You have a, yeah, yeah, no rush. No one else is here, but I'm not rushing. Otherwise, I'm done. Damn. This class is just for you. Everyone else is online. There's six people online. What the hell? Is Giselle no, I'm just kidding. Oh. No. no, Giselle is having a baby. No, she came first this morning. I know. That's I still call that together. <laughs> that process is all inclusive, in my opinion. It's not happening anymore. She has. That's like, true. Present tense. She currently has child. First. I don't really want to do that. What? Make light? Well, look. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it goes on forever. All yeah. right, this is all getting recorded. So let me just. Uh... Sub summary of article, the research proposal thing. And John says that we are going to peer review mm -hmm. the personal statement, so I should keep this. Yeah, but let me. Do you want me to print a second copy? Just, just stamp it right now. Stamp it so that I know you had it on time. On this one as well. I don't know how to do this better with the stamps because, like, stamp like right here. What? What's wrong? Stamp right there. What? I won't be able to read it. It was already open. I just okay. locked it on my way. Awesome. Thank you. And you're keeping it locked, too. Is John here? Yeah, it's printing at last minute in morning class. Where's everyone? Green was in Sunny Land. And I don't know, Jose, I don't know if you want to. She just leave right now. I got a stamp. Oh, All right. Might as well. I wait, but I need to use first. Ah, I don't do it. Do they know the number for two dollars? It just feels like. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do it all and then do something new and then do something new. Okay, that's fair. Summary. Okay. I will. Excuse me? Never have I ever what? been so outraged. The, the idea, the audacity to want to cancel a classroom. We're doing a service to everyone else. And we care about our peers. No. 
My lab partner is finding a business here. Who are your lab partners? Yeah, John is now saying he doesn't uh, want to go today. I was like, what? Okay. Damn. Maybe. Okay. I'm not sure how much it affects you if we don't go to school. But like, it's only me and Jose and John and Cell can't come. And I feel bad going without them. I mean, that's a you, right? Taking observations is an important part of this class. I want to do it, but John, yeah. Okay. Right. So you, one thing about your team's management, right, is, is that whoever takes the observations and does the data analysis will get the grade. If folks don't take the observations and don't do data analysis, they will not get the grade. Yeah, so I want to screw over other people. In what way? If I go without design, you know, they don't get a good grade. They will not get a good grade either way. Right. If they don't go, they can't get a good grade. I can't just like remove a required part of this class because people aren't participating. In it. I am required by the university. Yeah, I'm not saying we'll never go, but I'll just wait for the kid. Okay. All right. But I'm just saying if you're thinking about yourself and you have someone who wants to go take observations tonight, right? That's just ensuring that your grade is locked in. Because you will not just need one night of observation. You will need many, many nights of observations. So the longer that it takes to start those observations in the first place, the longer that it takes to build the experiment in non-observational questions. So if other people go, it's not just me all the time. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying just you, like that would be, you know. But like if you and someone went, right? You and Jose. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't see Jose either. Unless he put on his invisibility cloak. Paolo said he had an invisibility cloak earlier for 4,400. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so this is a quorum. We're going to have John join us in a few moments. Do you have your summaries for your chapter or for your review article? You're writing summaries as well? Yes, sir. Right? Okay, let's recall what is required in this class. All right, here is the updated content calendar. There are things in it. We are paying attention to that because the class gives you how many units? Four, four. So what does that mean as far as your workload? three hours per unit. So it's 12 hours per week. That's a little more than a part-time job, right? 10 hours a week, that's like a part-time job while you're in school, right? Okay, so if you're thinking to yourself, well, I come once a week and I'll just figure it out then. Each one of those weeks that goes by, you're not working and I'm, I'm not really speaking to you, speaking to the absent people, if it doesn't really help, right? But this is your hopefully able to communicate to your fellow peers every week that goes by that we don't take observations or we don't write summaries or we don't turn in um, personal statements is time that you can't get back. Because unless you want to do 90 weeks, <laughs> you know, at the end of the semester, which I don't think is physically possible. Right. Nine, or 90 hours in the last week, right? So here's what we have left, right? We still have 10 weeks approximately. So we're not in danger, but red lights keep going off, right? We're missing markers. Yeah. And so we're here, we're in week seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and change. Now note, one of these, I forget where it is. It's like here is Turkey Turkey Week, right? So I'll have someone um, fill in for that on Tuesday, but you will have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off, I believe, right? Something like that. Thursday and Friday, maybe. Yeah. Just Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be in Tokyo then. So, well, um, but that'll be for work, not for funds. <laughs> I mean, it's still very cool, um, but. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, so.
someone will do this piece here, which will be spectroscopy if we get to that. Um, currently, the scopes that we've been using will be the scopes that you have right now. Um, I'm not building in the fact that the um, domes that the domes are are going to be ready, even though we have the potential for the domes to be ready by the end of the month. If the domes are ready at the end of the month, our ability to do observation goes because we'll be able to do not just images, we'll be able to do spectroscopy in some cases, and we'll have more channels than just red, green, blue. We have more um, filters in that wheel, okay? So we'll do broadband spectroscopy. We're not gonna do fine grain spectroscopy, but we'll get images of galaxies that'll be sharper than you've ever seen with an EV scope. Okay, um, so you're here, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you're here. Just got to remember that even though we meet once a week, we should still have contact hours. Um, hopefully folks are emailing me with questions that they have. I've seen a number of people's personal statements before they got printed today. So I know that we're making good progress, but generally speaking, I'll summarize the advice that I've been giving everyone, right? Um, for today, we're gonna do rubric construction. And we are using our personal statements. Hopefully everyone has a draft of their personal statement. Raise your hand if you don't. Good, okay. So what we're gonna do today is thinking about the GRFP, which not everyone is necessarily applying to. We're going to develop what is called a rubric. So a rubric is designed to determine whether something is good or bad. And generally speaking, we use these for examinations, right? So if you have a good professor, they will ahead of time decide what they think is important. They'll say, this is worth this many points, this is worth this many points, and this is worth this many points, and then they'll grade on that. And similarly, when we evaluate um, a personal statement, it's not just like, oh, this was a cool story, or this person wrote it in a limerick, and therefore it's good. We have to have quantifiable metrics by which we determine whether or not something is good. So you may have seen this website. Hopefully you are becoming much more familiar with it, right? And you've read through it and you kind of understand some of the background, but we will take some of the ideas here and we'll generalize them into a rubric so that we can evaluate one another's personal statements, okay? Questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Um. Let's start with this one here, which is not your personal statement, but mine. Uh, so it's a two-pager. It's about me as a human being, and it's a diversity and inclusion statement. So part of the proposal, uh, not proposal, part of the application process for applying to this job, you create something like that. I also have a, um, a cover letter here, so we can look at that if we want to. But I'm thinking this will be more appropriate for next week to analyze that. So we'll start with this one. And uh, we're gonna start with this, just thinking about it, not just reading it, right, but thinking about it critically. Thinking about sentence structure, thinking about does it do the main things that we ask for topic sentences, for paragraphs, etc. cetera, right? Um, what you're looking for here is to think critically about someone else's writing. Because then we're going to reflect on that. We're going to create a rubric that's attuned to this, right? The, the website that I showed. And then from there, we're going to apply that rubric to a peer grade. Okay. Yeah, just read it right now. It shouldn't take more than five minutes. Mark it up if you want. Identify things that you think are good or bad. And we're going to talk about what we see as good or bad. And we'll put them on different sides of the board. And if you have your summaries, please bring, pre, please bring them up at some point. Yeah, I'm going to mark that. 
Yeah. How long did it take you to write it? Like when you started, <laughs> like when you thought, okay, this is good enough to send it. Uh, you're looking at the first version. No, the second version that I sent out. I think I sent out 10 versions. So you would send it out and then you get feedback. Some more of your friends, some would send it out again to different school and you send it out again to a different school. Uh, it's an ongoing process. I wouldn't say that I just sat down and wrote it in a day. You sit down, you write it, and you send it to someone and they say, what the fuck you written? You, know, you get feedback and you change it. So months. Yeah, so look for things that you identified as good writing. And we're going to talk about what that means. So when we see ideas of your, you know, you have this like feeling inside yourself, you're like, ah, that read well, or this didn't read well. And then we're going to quantify those things. And we're also thinking about the things that we've already mentioned. So using topic sentences, can this be read by only reading the first sentence of each paragraph? And do I still get the same idea? Do the sentences in the paragraph support the topic sentence, right? Is there that structure? Does it flow logically? Does it feel out of place, right? All of these different types of questions, plus new questions that we're going to add on top. I don't know if you use the one you're asking for for my application, right? Are you using the right hand? No, no, no I think it's, I think when I send the other stuff. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that, like, because I know that it's a little bit different of a topic than, like, kind of what we're going to aim for. Yeah, considering the fact that most people were in Canada first draft today. Yeah. So we're not going to use the same rubric that we're going to use for DRP. We're going to sort of speak general because some people, what they put, put, put together is just a collection of ideas and they need help shaping it. Right? So it'd be a larger discussion than simply, did you do good? Yeah, so no. Oh, well, so when, when you're looking at mine, have you read the actual description? I just sometimes I like read the description mm -hmm. and I read mine and I get worried that I'm not really following what the description is. I don't know if that's just me like overthinking myself. Show like that. Am I actually following what it's saying? Or am I not? Well, go check that.
Hey folks, how are we doing? On a scale of not read it at all to read the whole thing, how far are you? Okay. All right. So I think that's fine. We can take a pause here. Because what I want to do is I want to collect some of our thoughts and ideas and turn them into tools that we can use to assess one another's writing. So I wrote three sets of words on the board. I wrote good, fine, and I wrote need to work. So I want you to reflect on things that you read and identify just by raising your hand and just tell me one thing that you think fits under either of these three categories. Something that you thought was good, something you thought was fine, or something that you thought needed work. And we're going to take those thoughts and concepts and turn them into common threads, common ideas. Yeah. Uh, I thought what was good it was that like the final thing that you said was like a concise strategy that you outlined about what you wanted to do. Okay. I think that was that that's like a pretty strong way to end. All right. Like, so what you said concise strategy. Strategy. That you outlined. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I was going to say every paragraph you start to go down the top of the sentence, or you can back to the Okay, so every sentence? Um, you didn't find anything? One, like the top of the sentence in every paragraph. Yeah, yeah. Like you still back it up after. Good. So, topic sentences. It'd be funny if I wrote this and you know, I'm telling you to write the topic sentence all the time and I just rambled. <laughs> anything else?
how I don't know how to word it, but it, how you like explain, uh, or I guess how like you explain something that happened and what you learned or like what you're going to do about it, like towards the end. It was kind of just like a big piece of like from the start to the end. It was like a whole little narrative that yes. strung along very well. Okay, cohesive narrative. Anything else? Yeah. Like, identified yourself, like, with your background. You, like, highlighted where your family was from. Mm -hmm. And, like, also, I guess, just, like, uh, how that how that kind of molded or at least shaped your perspective on the world, which is like important to know. So like okay, so I want to rephrase that in a way so that we can reuse it, right? So it's a nice compliment. I appreciate it, but we want to use that in order to understand how the writing is good. So you saying that um, I communicated my personality, or is that putting words? In? No, that's. I mean, that's that's very you're like addressing. Communicated the story or something. Mm -hmm. um, which do you prefer? Uh, I don't know how to, how else to put it. <laughs> I do like that. Okay, there was like a human being that came through. Mm -hmm. okay. Not like that. Yeah, I like facts and information. No, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to critically think about this. You know, did I accidentally put CSU Fullerton? <laughs> did you? <laughs> Not in this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know, right? There could be another version in which that was true. So what would that go under if, if that happened? Work. Needs work. Okay, so let's put here. I didn't. You didn't see any typos, right? Okay, so ab absence of typos. It, um, maybe I just don't know what this word. You know, I think by right. yeah, I think it's bright lines. But yeah, that's... that was it. I wasn't gonna say that, <laughs> but I am really drawn to this concept of how many light lines. I think you meant to say bright, right. but I wasn't gonna. Where is it? What, what page? It's the oh, first paragraph. Right. Like, oh six, my six, god! Six, Instead six, of bite, it should be bright. I think. Oh, wow. Okay. So what is that? Right. <laughs> so that needs work. That needs work. Well, yeah. I just I I didn't realize. You can that. say it though, right? Yeah. But yeah, you're right. As soon as you're like, I don't know if that's what it means. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Maybe my copy's the only one. Yes, that's why I didn't get caught. I mean, obviously, I looked at this many times, but apparently, that never appeared. You just like read over. Um, not to nitpick, but I did see. No, you have to nitpick. The point of this exercise is to nitpick. <laughs> not to be you're like, you're like, oh, I don't want to say anything about the assignment that you're giving us. Um, no, no, no. You're giving me an S, right? That's the point. I already have the job. Yeah. Right? Oh. This obviously worked. <laughs> so I don't care about what you think about it. The point <laughs> is, is to, to learn how to critically analyze writing. Because in order to critically analyze your own writing, you have to be able to do it. Go ahead. Uh, I think it's the last sentence before. Oh, so in the last paragraph before inclusion in the classroom and research setting. Uh, yeah. Where it says, I believe that my, it is my. That my it is my. Yeah, that my it is my. That's like another that's thing. That's like a grammar thing. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Okay. But let's, yeah, let's say grammar. I saw that too, but I, I got the meaning behind what he was saying. Okay. And you'll notice there's a little bit of like, 
there's some acceptability, right? You like got the idea. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is that we think about these different things. We are going to like draw a level of, it's okay. He's not an idiot, right? He didn't write this with like chalk on the whiteboard and then take a picture and send it in. Yeah. Right? Power moves. Power moves. <laughs> yeah. Is it like, isn't it also really important that you did focus on diversity and inclusion? Because I know that that's like a huge thing that the SOC. I don't know if like yeah. other institutions that might be. In almost all institutions these days, it's, it's preferred. But some people do lip service to it, and some people can't. Right? So every department is going to be made up of faculty members who decide their own policies. And if the faculty who are present don't care, then even if the university requires it, it does not mean it will get it. But the reason why this statement responds to diversity is because it was asked for it, right? They asked for this statement, and I wrote it. So this is not a personal statement, right? This is like, what are my goals and values? And we'll see some similarities in your personal statement for GRT, where they ask you to reflect on your own past and how that makes you a unique contributor to science, and then also what your broader impacts might be. What if it's like, like let's say it's like for a job, right? And like yeah. for something, and they're asking you to write about something like that, but it's not something that you have had experience for or even care about, honestly. Like, if a company is like, oh, like how are you going to like make us more money or something like that? And you're like, well, dude, I don't fucking care about making the money. I just want to do the job. Like, I just care about this. How would you then? Would that just not be an option to join that job then? Yeah, you might consider it. Okay. Uh, you know, this is this is tricky, right? Because part of good writing is being able to talk about the things that you're passionate about well. But also, sometimes you need to talk about the mundane things, right? I have some 10-point plan to make you more money. But if you've never given any thought to that, you're going to end up sounding foolish. In the same way that if you write code and you hand it in to me, and I look at it, you might it might not look as good as someone who understands what code looks like. So if you have some like half-cocked scheme, it's not going to be as good as if you've thought about it for a long time. right? So generally speaking, I don't recommend writing a writing a lot on things that you don't actually care about. Now, they might ask you to, and you're like kind of in a hole. You want the job. I don't, know. I don't want to write this, but you have to. But that's not your case for your diversity. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I'm just sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like OK, anything else? Some folks have. <laughs> No comments? Yeah. I would say you could maybe use the word I a little bit less. Ah, maybe use the word I a little bit less. How bad was it? Yeah. Uh, it was fun. Came up a lot. <laughs> Came up a lot? Okay. Used. I. Too much. What's another way of phrasing that? What's another way of like identifying what was wrong with that? Too narrative. Yeah. Anything else? No, I'm one. You're the only one who hasn't. Hasn't thought. Well, wouldn't it be okay to do this amount, this like much amount of ice for them to do the job? <laughs> you got it. The job, and it goes get a point of bronze. Sure. sure, and we can talk about that when we assess, you know, where this falls into how important it is. So some of these are going to be really important, right? And some of them are going to be less important, right? People were saying, "Oh, I can overlook your grammar mistakes." Yeah. Right. So what we'll say is not all of the things we bring down are equal. And that's part of writing a blueprint. So identify what are the most important things to you, right? No one likes fine. Fine. <laughs> fine, it's gone. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do then. We're going to take these thoughts and ideas, and we're going to create the opposites 
And we're going to take those thoughts and ideas and we're going to create the opposites. And we're going to have one on one side, one on the other. And then we'll rank them based on how, how important they are. Like, okay. So first, concise strategy. What would be an example of not concise strategy? How would you phrase that? Uh, random. Wordy. Can they random? Run on. Uh, Run on? Yeah, lack structure. Okay, let's do that. Wordy. Lacks structure. Okay. Anything else? The first one. Oh, you know what? I won't do it here. Uh, oh. Watch this. It would be amazing. Oh. Nice. Nice. Hold on, you'll see, you'll see. Just type, just type. Relax. Everyone, calm down. Oh, uh, is this one of those? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So we have a rubric. Yeah. Let's put on one side. Good. Let's put on this side. Neds. Can you see that okay? Or you want it like 10 times bigger? Oh. Yeah, that works. Yeah. All right. Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. All right, what's the first one? Uh, concise strategy. Okay. And the opposite of that was? That was a uh, worry lack structure. Uh, topic sentence. Topic sentence is what? Like, like give, give the main idea of the paragraph. Like the okay. paragraph. So present, there were topic sentences and supporting statements in the paragraph, right? Yeah. Okay. And what was the opposite of that? Yeah. Okay, another way of saying that. Uh, the good stuff is like not at the beginning. You like you 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 saved it for like last. Yeah, sentences. Are you kidding me? I can let's remember one thing. I am not a spellist. Okay. All right. Let's do uh like that. Good. All right, what's next? Cohesive narrative. And what was the other one? Good. Anything else about that? Everyone loves it? Okay, next. Communicated personality. Okay. Yeah. And the other one you'd say would be robotic? impersonal I like a little bit more because robotic sounds like you know dee -doo, dee -doo. and I don't think that writing actually usually sounds like that I mean impersonal would be you don't hear the voice right I'll do both because we what what I like jokes yeah go ahead <laughs> So not only do people do this, it's not right. So companies claim to be able to identify AI cheating and they cannot. 
So claims about or against AI are very hard to come by because generally speaking, AI generated words don't have tracers, right? There isn't something hidden in text. In particular, if you copy and paste it into a different document. Now, if you had you know, the original document or they download you a document, right, or you take a picture or something and then you grab the text from that, there is no way to identify for sure that it's AI because AI or not really AI, what's called language models are designed to look like writing. And guess what? Writing is writing, <laughs> right? Like if you write the word book after the word the, that's how it's supposed to come. <laughs> that makes sense? Okay. Usually the way to spot AI writing or lang large language models being used for someone's writing, you know? a big jump in their ability to write. <laughs> so you start off with the baseline. Summary, 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 summary. Personal statement is amazing. Red flag. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. We want you to, to struggle, to, to put out something that you're like, this is crap, and then it gets better, and it gets better, and it gets better. Because then, just like you're working out or you're getting good at any task, you will build up those t tools and abilities, right? Okay, communicated personality. Absence of typos, in what respect? Because I know that we had some afterwards. Okay, so let's do grammar. Grammar. Good. Spelling. Well. <laughs> All right, and here, uh, you know. But grammar good, but G-U-D. <laughs> So that would be spelling, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grammar, no good. Grammar, no good. Very all right. There we go. And then well spelling. Yeah. Well, well, spelled. Spelled. well spelled. Well spelled. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay. Is that reasonable? Anything else? Are we missing anything? Too much. Too much narrative. Used I too much. Yeah. Too narrative. So that's on this side. We don't like it. So what would be the opposite of that? So on the other side, we said cohesive narrative. Okay, I just want to draw the distinction here between these different thoughts, because on one, we said that there was a cohesive narrative, right? And then we're saying on this side, also it used I too much. Yeah. Ah, okay. So balancing when things happen to you versus doing all the things. Oh my God, stop. Something like that? Okay, so instead of saying, I went to the store and then I bought a bag of chips and then I got in the car and then I drove home and then I ate the bag of chips and then I went to the uh, bathroom, you would say, uh, because I was hungry, I went to the store to grab a bag of chips. While there, uh, money was paid from my debit account because something like that. I don't know. You like change the way it's phrased, um, causing me to get diarrhea and need to use the restroom. Right. So that's a way of removing all of these. I did these things in that order and saying some stuff happened to you. Right. From the process of you participating in something. So participating in summer research um, gives me the opportunity to learn more about X, Y, and Z and has provided me with tools. Now, you might end up with too many me's, but then that's why we balance them with eyes. 
right? So you think about one I, a me, a me, an I, an I, a me, an I, right? And that way it's not I, 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 right? Okay. Anything else we need here? Okay, generally speaking, is it only the case that you can have the left or the right? No, right? And that's why I left space in between. So the way that you would go about thinking about this rubric is you might do something like this, right? You might go in here and uh, you might assess each one of these and you say, well, some of these are better than others, right? Which one of these is the best, the most important for you? Cohesive narrative. How many people like cohesive narrative? Raise your hand. That's how we're going to assign points. Two? Oh, points? Hey, raise your hand if you like cohesive narrative. Raise your hand for cohesive narrative. What's the, what's the scale? So which is the most important to you? Raise your hand right now. If cohesive narrative is the most important to you. Okay. You can vote twice. <laughs> All right. Topic sentences, only twice. Yeah. Raise your hand for topic sentences. If that's the most important thing to you. Twice. Only twice, yeah. Two, three. Okay. Communicated personality. Four. Okay. Grammar good. <laughs> Did y'all run out of votes already? Okay. Anyone have votes left? <laughs> no? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so that already tells me that cohesive narrative seems like it's the most important thing. Oh, shoot. There's concise strategy at the top. I need to zoom out. Just read a bit. Okay, there we go. Um, let's move this to the top. And then communicated personality. Does anyone want to change since con concise strategy was there? Okay. All right, so now the second most important thing to them. Okay. You can vote. You can vote once. Um, concise strategy, second most important thing. No one. Two. Grammar good. Okay, zero. Spelling well. One. Okay. Balancing things happen to you versus doing all the things. Oh, everyone loves that. All right, that's like five or six. Okay, so that's clearly the second most important. And where does this fit compared to these other ones? Like Raise your hand if it's below cohesive narrative. Raise your hand if it's below communicated person. This one, balancing things happen to you. Raise your hand if it's below communicated personality. Okay. Raise your hand if it's below topic sentences. Okay, so then it's fair right here. Okay, and then, so then this looks like it fits really well. All right, now let's do this. Uh, six, five, four, three, two, one. Seven. That's how we're gonna rank them in importance, okay? And when we look at each one of these, we will see that we could probably have steps in between. So what would be just, uh, let's take this one here. Let's take this one because it'll be really straightforward. What would be like a, are you fucking joking me? All right, that's not happening. I can't even, I can't even click around it. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell how much I care about that. Okay. All right, so now this is in the middle. We're just, we'll go. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You don't see it, right? Can, it's all you see? Okay, hold on. Let me. No, I can't look. I can't even touch it. No, I'm telling you, I can't. You think that I don't know how to use my computer. It, I, I treat it like shit, so it's okay. All right, so there's something in between. So instead of good and needs work, we can do something like the word fine. So what's in between topic sentences print, present and supporting statements in the paragraph? There's like seven topic sentences left here and then other scattered thoughts. Good, right? 
what would be a version of that which would be in between good and fine? And I, I'm not going to use a word for it. Most topic sentences. Is that it? Like mostly good. Mostly supported. Yeah, there you go. Supported. Okay. And on the other direction? Mid topic sentences. Mid? <laughs> what about few? Oh, or few. Almost positive it's the key. Okay, but now I feel like it's the it almost looks right now. I know if I type it enough times, you're gonna be converted. Okay. All right, what about this one? Can we can we get any other examples of fine in the middle? Mostly communicated. <laughs> Mostly communicated, like uh, you know, a person inside of your circle. Okay. Yeah, most. Um, so you want to say it like this: most. Yeah. We can say that. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice. Okay, so now we're done. So that's really good. So now you've developed what's called a rubric. So as you assess one another's work, you will use this rubric, assuming that it stays up for the following 27.16 seconds, okay? <laughs> so this will be straightforward. And what we're gonna do is we are going to do a round robin, okay? So you're not gonna pair off because I think there's an odd number of people. So you're going to pass your statement to your friend or to your left, it doesn't have to be a friend. And then they, you will take one from your right. So the first thing to do is make sure your statement has your name on it, okay? And then let's keep in mind, these are not finished products, okay? So you're not gonna tear into this person, your statement is a piece, of no, okay? What we're doing here is we're trying to be constructive. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify places where they're doing good, right? And say, hey, look, you know, your sentence structure here needs work, but I saw that it has a cohesive narrative. Or you can identify what they're trying to say and be like, are you trying to say X, Y, and Z? And therefore this is how I might say it, right? So hand it to your left. So you may have to go across the way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you mean your right? <laughs> yeah, what are you? So you're going to the left and you're going to the left. Look at... Do yeah. A circle, do a circle. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Turn around into a circle. <laughs> what? No, no, no. Make a circle and then pass it to your. Oh, pass it to your right. Sorry, pass it to your right. I meant that way, like that. No, no, no. Because it doesn't. But then Fernando would be like, yeah. Bro, just calm down. Okay. Make a make a large seven person circle. Yeah, all we are saying, right? And then you give peace a chance yeah. and you hand it. For example, if you're writing about X, Y, and Z, and that comes from this paper or something, yeah. you'll need that in there. Right? Okay. That's why you're reading these papers for your research, right? Okay, should I just do this right now while folks are... I don't know. Yeah, I guess you have to stop sharing. You took a picture? Yeah. Let me... Hold on. Yeah, let me... Hold on. Oh, you're just going to make it available to us. Got it. That's what I was. Okay. Thanks for listening. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> you were not. You don't have to lie to me. Anyone with the link can view. Should we put edit? That way, folks can put stuff in there if they want. 
in case this disappears forever and we never see it ever, ever again. Yeah, but if you're going to hear it, it was great. Would not be the first time, my friends. Okay, so let's put this into... Did I make a channel? Uh-oh. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just send it to everyone who's here as a little benefit for being here. Nice. Well, I feel like Giselle... Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Giselle gets a very big yeah. pass. She gets a baby-sized pass. But we've already had that conversation. That's true. That's true. Um, yes, absolutely. All right. Is your name missing here? You want to be included in your not? Oh, is it like a group chat? Yeah, but oh. just but just for that rubric. Yeah. Oh god. Okay, folks. Um, this recording is gonna stop. We're gonna fix my computer and we'll come back later. Maybe. Hopefully. We'll see. Maybe never again.